And I'm talking to you from the AWF Training School, and this is Rick's Corner. And I'm talking to K Dub, who we haven't had a chance to meet yet and talk to, find out a little bit about him. Um, how long have you been training now? I've been training for a year and a half now. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and consistently? Consistently, yeah. Pretty much, I average about two days a week. Most likely, I try to get in here three days a week. Well, you did three days a week for a long time. Yeah, for a long, long time. And then also you go to the gym for the weights how many days a week? I go to the gym for the weights at least four days a week. Um, I'm in there pretty much about two hours to two and a half hours every day I'm in the gym. And plus a full-time job. And a full-time job where I work about 45 to 50 hours every week. And you got a packed schedule. Uh, tell them a little bit about your diet, how important that is, um, what you're doing. Diet is really, really important. Um, definitely protein, high protein, um, chicken, steak. You know, uh, anything from salmon to tilapia, any type of, uh, you know, sushi, any type of meat like that is really good to pack on the protein and put on the muscle. Um, carbs, I usually try to stick with, you know, white rice, brown rice, sweet potatoes, stuff like that. Stay away from a lot of pasta, but it's good to get pasta in there. It gives you a lot of energy when you eat that. It does. If you eat too much, you get fat. That's the whole thing, though. And you know how important it is in the wrestling business that we're selling flesh and how much it, it, it is important to look good. Yes, sir. Have a muscular body. Yes, sir. Because the bigger, the better. The bigger, and, the better. And, and if you're going to go to WWE, that's not the only game in town, but if that's your direction, or TNA, they're going to be looking for muscle. Yes, sir. People with, you know, body shape. Um, you know, people out there want to see what they want to be. People out there want to see something that's believable. So if you have a body, you have the shape, that's what people want to see on TV. So that's what these companies are looking for. They want people who are built. They want people who can, you know, dedicate themselves to what they're doing and people who can be consistent for them on a natural basis. And you don't want to hide it in the ring with a baggy shirt and, and jeans? No, no. Not while you're out there. You want people to see what you got. You want people to see how it looks. You want them to see you know, the definition, where it's built at. You're covering it up with a shirt. Obviously, you got a shirt on. For some reason, you're trying to hide something. Exactly. So, you know, nothing against those people that have to wear shirts, but, you know, a little hard work and dedication, you don't have to wear a shirt. How important is it to have personality, not only in the ring, but outside the ring, to be able to communicate with the people, be able to talk like a professional, and to be able to present yourself like a businessman, because wrestling is wrestling business. There's wrestling and there's the business end. So when you go to meet a promoter, for example, when you go down to San Diego or you go up north to Fog City, you have to represent yourself like a professional, right? Yeah, it's, it's really, really important. Um, Luckily for me, you know, I was able to play college football, so that helped me out a lot, you know, meeting the media, meeting coaches. Um, you got boosters that come in from time, you know, time to time. So when I'm in, the, you know, in the ring, I'm able to, you know, talk to the characters and the people outside. And then when I'm in the back, you know, with the guys, when I'm talking to promoters or someone back there doing interviews, you got to be able to carry yourself on that business level also, whether, you know, you're going to be late or, you know, you need to call to work something out. You know, you have to have to be really, really professional when you're dealing with these people. Um, people in the world already look at wrestling as a you know a freak show or a carnival sport. Right. If we carry ourselves like that, then they're really going to think that. So you got to keep that business aspect to it and treat it like a real business. Or, you know, there's no telling how everyone will look at you with what you do. It's also important that that, that I get a lot of calls from you out there asking about wrestling schools around the country. Now I don't know a lot about schools around the country because there's not that many. There's a few good ones that there's old school guys like myself that run a pretty decent school. There's also a lot of younger guys that say they have a school and say they're a champion and they're going to take your money and show you nothing. Am, am I right about that? It's yes. not just coming to me. Yes, you are. I've, I've had the fortune to be able to train with Rick and learn from someone, you know, who has a background who's been in the industry for a long time, but also hear stories from time to time of people who have, you know, got their money taken or, you know, train with someone who hasn't had any shows, any matches, tries to run their own promotion and things like that, you know. Nothing against anyone trying to do what they're doing, more power to you, but if you're taking this serious and you want to try to get to the next level or your dream is just to entertain people on the indie circuit, you want to learn from people who know what they're doing so you're not putting those other people's careers or life in jeopardy also. Exactly. It's all about safety. And also when you call, and I've told Kevin many times, when you call me about wrestling schools, there's a good half amount of times that someone will call and they won't leave me a voicemail. I can't always get to my phone 
And I call them back and I'll ask, what do they want? And they say, I want to find out about your school. What's it cost? Well, there, you need to ask, like Kevin called me and we talked for a while. You got to find out the right questions. You got to find out if you're even capable of handling this and come and meet me and show me what you're about. If you're in physical shape, it's not all about what it costs. I don't care what it costs. If you want it bad enough, you'll pay any price to become a wrestler. I'm not saying I'm taking your money, but, but that's one factor. But the thing is, you got to really have the desire, no matter what. I know that I traveled five days a week back in the 60s, two hours each way to Bakersfield in L.A., and I paid $25 a class, which is like 175 today, which was hard to come by. And I had worked full-time and hit a gym. I would have paid anything to become a wrestler, and I did, and I lived my dream. So if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. Am I right? Yes, sir. I mean, you're working all these days. You're going to the gym. You're coming I'm, here. I'm working pretty much all day, five days a week. I'm in the gym four days a week. I go from work some days to training. I go from training some days to work to the gym, you know, and, you know, the cost of it, you're, you're going to be spending that money on something anyway. You know, some people are at the club having three or four drinks. There's a class for you. There you go. Some people are, you know, going to the movie three times a week. There's your gym membership. So, I mean, if you, you know, if you're disciplined, this is what you want. You got to really be dedicated. You know, you got to be able to give up some stuff that's leisure for what you really want out of this sport. And you can't be lazy about it. If exactly. you're going to do this, you got to do it more than once a week. It's just like going to the gym. You don't go once a week. You've got to put your heart and soul into it, and then you will live your dream. You'll become what you want to become. It just depends on how bad you want it. You can have anything in this world if you want it. But you got to want it bad enough to go for it. And I know people hear this, oh, if you want it bad enough, you can make it happen. It's true. You'll make it. You'll find a way to make it happen. Yes, you can. And, and that's what we're doing now. And we got a lot of good guys here getting better and better and better. And uh, next year, you're going to try out for WWE. Yeah, that's the, that's the dream. That's the plan. Yeah, so. and you're close right now. We'll see how And it goes. we both heard stories about what they're looking for. True, we have. We have. So. And it's, um, it's something to work towards. you got to start now. If you're thinking about doing this, just like Kevin... He jumped on and did it. He didn't put it behind him. He didn't wait till next month. He didn't wait six months. I've had people call and say, oh, I need to wait. I'm going to wait. I don't know what they're waiting for, but, you know, you want anything nowadays, you better grab it because there's someone in line right behind you will take it out from underneath you. You know, every time you get in line for something and you, you lose your place, you've got to get behind 100 people again. And it's the same thing with WWE. They get people all the time, all the time. So gear yourself towards that, or TNA, or uh, uh, Ring of Honor. There's other places. There's not. That's not the only one. And uh, I had told you recently about a guy that tried out. He was older, tried out for WWE, and he was a little too old. And they sent him home, and so he quit. And I, my feelings were he should have gone to indie shows. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you, you know, if you try something, someone tells you you're too old. A lot of times, people are trying to test your dedication. Sometimes people are trying to test. Okay, is this really what that person wants, or right. they just trying to get there, you know, quick as can be? But you know, if somebody turns you away, you know, don't give away. Come back, keep fighting, do what they want you to do, get better, come back, and be prepared to do it again. And what's the age limit for WWE? Is it 21? I think 21 is the youngest. Yeah, a lot of you guys have asked me that. If you can get in at 15 or 16, there's no way. You've got to be legal age, and 21 is legal. Don't forget, you're going to be traveling. You're going to be going to other countries. You've got to have passports. You have ID. You've got to be over the, the legal age of 21, be able to travel and do that. So if you think you're going to get in at 16 or 17, it's not going to happen. So I've answered these questions before, but Kevin knows you have to be of age. That's just the way it is, and you have to have a license, and you have to have a physical. You have to go through everything they go through to become a pro wrestler. And, and when you write into me and you tell me, my friend trade me he's 15 years old he's a professional it's impossible you're not a professional until you're paying your bills out of that check that you get for wrestling that's true and you're on the road working for a big company that's a professional am i right that's a professional right well are there any things uh, a bits of advice you'd like to tell them before we close this out i'm um, just you know keep keep chasing your dream man you know if i uh, was the type of person that gave up on you know what i wanted i wouldn't be here right here today so keep your dreams in order keep working hard stay dedicated things can possibly happen for you this is Rick Drayson, Rick's Corner, AWF Pro Wrestling School. Stay tuned. We'll have more for you next week.